In this video, I'll start by giving you a summary of what we've learned about asymptotes from our previous videos, and then we'll work through some examples of finding asymptotes of rational functions. First off, asymptotes are lines that the function go towards as you trace along its graph. There are three types of asymptotes that we've learned about, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and oblique asymptotes. And let's go over how we find each of these types of asymptotes. First, let's talk about vertical asymptotes. I'll usually abbreviate them with VA. To find vertical asymptotes, we factor the numerator and denominator of our rational function, we cancel out the common factors, and then we set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Next, we have horizontal asymptotes, which we'll abbreviate with HA. Remember, to determine the horizontal asymptotes of a rational function, we want to think about its end behavior. And what we learned was that if the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, then our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals the fraction of the leading coefficients. However, if the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Lastly, we have oblique asymptotes, or OAs. Oblique asymptotes are also found by looking at the end behaviors of rational functions. We only end up with oblique asymptotes when the degree of the numerator is just one higher than the degree of the denominator. When that's the case, the oblique asymptote is y equals the quotient that we get from polynomial long division. If the degree of the numerator is any higher, we would no longer have an oblique asymptote because the end behavior would no longer be aligned. One thing to note is that horizontal asymptotes and oblique asymptotes both depend on the end behavior of our rational functions, which depend on the degrees of the numerator and denominator. So it's not possible to have both a horizontal asymptote and an oblique asymptote. Your rational function will have one or the other, or maybe neither. Now that we know how to find these asymptotes, let's get some practice with some examples. In example A here, we want to find all asymptotes of the rational function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2 divided by 2x squared plus x minus 6. Let's start by finding the vertical asymptotes for this rational function. In order to do that, we need to factor both the numerator and denominator. For the numerator, we need to come up with two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add up to positive 1. So two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add up to positive 1 would be positive 2 and negative 1. So our numerator factor is as x plus 2 times x minus 1. To factor the denominator here, it's a little bit more difficult because there's a 2 in front of the x squared. In order to factor this, we're going to use the technique called factoring by grouping. First off, we need to come up with two numbers that multiply to the product of the first and the last number. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And then our two numbers need to add up to the middle number, 1. So two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add up to 1 would be 4 and negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that middle term, that x here, and rewrite it as 4x and negative 3x. And now let's write down the rest of our polynomial. We have 2x squared out in front and then negative 6 at the end. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We'll group the first two terms together and group the second two terms together. And what we want to do is come up with the common factors that are in each of these groups. So between 2x squared and 4x, there is a common factor of 2x. And what's left once we pull that out? There's just an x plus 2 remaining. In our second group, negative 3x minus 6, there's a common factor of negative 3. And what's left when we pull out a negative 3? There's an x plus 2 remaining. And then lastly, since both of these groups have a common factor of x plus 2, we can pull that out and factor our polynomial as 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. So that's one way of factoring a quadratic when the leading coefficient is not 1. So now let's write down the denominator for our rational function. It's 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. 
And we see here that the numerator and denominator have a common factor of x plus 2. So let's cancel those out. And essentially, our function behaves like x minus 1 divided by 2x minus 3. Our last step in finding the vertical asymptote is to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So our denominator, what's left is 2x minus 3. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Let's start by adding 3 to both sides. This gives us 2x equals positive 3. Then divide both sides by 2. We get x equals 3 halves. So this here is our vertical asymptote. One thing I want to point out is that if we try to think about the domain of our rational function, we would need to think about what x values make the denominator equal to 0 x equals 3 halves will make this factor equal 0. So x equals 3 halves is not part of our domain. But also, x equals negative 2 would make this factor equal to 0. So x equals negative 2 is also not in our domain. But x equals negative 2 is not a vertical asymptote. So what we have instead here is a hole. Now let's think about horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. Remember that this will depend on the degrees of the polynomials in the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, we have an x squared here, so that makes it a degree 2 polynomial on top. And in the denominator, we have a 2x squared here, so that makes it a degree 2 polynomial on the bottom as well. Since the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, first of all, I'll know that I have a horizontal asymptote. And specifically, our horizontal asymptote is y equals the fraction of the leading coefficients. So I'll write down that we have a horizontal asymptote, and it's y equals the fraction of the leading coefficients. In the numerator, even though it's not explicitly written, the leading coefficient is 1. And in the denominator, the leading coefficient is 2. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 over 2. So that's all that we have to do to find all of the asymptotes for our rational function here. Let's look at some more examples. In example b here, we want to find all asymptotes of the function g of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6 divided by 2x minus 2. Let's start by finding the vertical asymptotes for this rational function. Remember, what we want to do is factor both the numerator and denominator. So let's start with the numerator. We have the polynomial x squared minus 5x plus 6. We can factor this by coming up with two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add up to negative 5. So two numbers that multiply to positive 6 and add up to negative 5 would be negative 2 and negative 3. So our numerator factors as x minus 2 times x minus 3. In our denominator, we have 2x minus 2. We see that both of those terms have a common factor of 2. So factoring the 2 out, we're left with x minus 1. Looking at our rational function here, we see that there are no common factors between the numerator and denominator. So all we have to do now to find the vertical asymptotes is just to set the denominator equal to 0. So let's set 2 times x minus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x. Here we can start by dividing 2 from both sides to get x minus 1 equals 0. Then add 1 to both sides, we get x equals 1. So x equals 1 is our vertical asymptote. Next, we need to decide whether our rational function has a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote. To determine that, we need to look at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, we have an x squared here, so that makes it a degree 2 polynomial. In our denominator, we have a 2x, which is a degree 1 polynomial. Since the numerator has one higher degree than the denominator, we know that we have an oblique asymptote. In order to find the oblique asymptote, we need to perform polynomial long division. So let's start by writing down the dividend, which is our numerator, x squared minus 5x plus 6. Then we draw our long division symbol, and we write down the divisor outside, 2x minus 2. When we do polynomial long division, we want to focus on these leading terms here. To determine what's on top, we want to take the leading term of your dividend and divide by the leading term of the divisor. So x squared divided by 2x, that leaves me with 1 half x. Next, we take this 1 half x, we multiply it to the divisor, and we write the result underneath. So 1 half x times 2x, 
gives me x squared. And then 1 half x times negative 2 gives me negative 1x. And then we subtract. If we have x squared and I subtract x squared, those two terms will cancel each other out. If I have negative 5x and I subtract negative x, the double negatives turns it into a plus x. So negative 5x plus x gives me a negative 4x. And then we bring the next term from our dividend down. So we write down the plus 6 here. And then we repeat the process. The leading term is now negative 4x. So to determine what goes on top, I want to take the negative 4x and I want to divide it by 2x. And negative 4x divided by 2x gives us negative 2. Next, we take the negative 2, we multiply it to the divisor, and we write the result underneath. Negative 2 times 2x gives us negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives us a positive 4. And then we subtract. The negative 4x minus negative 4x will cancel each other out. And then the 6 minus 4 gives us 2. Since there aren't any more terms to bring down from the dividend, we're done. So when we take x squared minus 5x plus 6 and we divide it by 2x minus 2, the quotient is 1 half x minus 2 and the remainder is 2. Now remember, the oblique asymptote is y equals the quotient. So that's y equals 1 half x minus 2 and this is our oblique asymptote. Let's go over one last example. In example C, we have the function h of x, which equals 2x plus 5 divided by 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. First, let's find our vertical asymptotes. Remember, to find the vertical asymptotes, what we need to do is factor both the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, 2x plus 5, there's nothing in common, so that doesn't factor any further. So let's write that down. In the denominator, we have a quadratic with a 3 as the leading coefficient. So once again, I'll factor this by grouping. I need to first rewrite this middle term. I need to come up with two numbers that multiply to the product of the first and the last number. So 3 times negative 8 gives us negative 24. And our two numbers need to add to the middle number, negative 2. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add up to negative 2. Those two numbers would be 4 and negative 6. So I'll write down instead of negative 2x, we write down 4x and negative 6x. Now let's write down the rest of our polynomial. We have 3x squared out in front, and then we have a minus 8 at the end. And what we want to do is factor this in groups. So the first two terms, 3x squared plus 4x, will be our first group. The last two terms, negative 6x and negative 8, will be our second group. In each of these groups, we want to pull out any common factors. So in our first group, between 3x squared and 4x, there's a common factor of x. What's left once we pull that out? We're left with 3x plus 4. In our second group, between negative 6x and negative 8, there's a common factor of negative 2. If we pull that out, we're left with, once again, 3x plus 4. Now, since there's a common factor of 3x plus 4 in both of these terms, we can factor that out. And so our denominator here factors as x minus 2 times 3x plus 4. Now that we have our rational function factored, we want to cancel out any common factors. But looking at these factors here, we see that there are no common factors, so there's nothing to cancel out. Next, we'll set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So we have x minus 2 times 3x plus 4, set that equal to 0, and solve for x. When you have a product of two things and it equals 0, that tells me that either the first factor equals 0 or the second factor equals 0. So we can split this equation up into two parts. We either have x minus 2 equals 0 or 3x plus 4 equal to 0. And let's solve for x in each of these equations. On the left here, x minus 2 equals 0. Just add 2 to both sides to get x equals 2. On the right here, we can solve for x by first subtracting 4 from both sides. This gives us 3x equals negative 4. Then divide by 3, we get x equals negative 4 over 3. So these are my two vertical asymptotes.
Next, we want to determine if our function has a horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote. To do that, we want to look at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, we have a 2x here, so that's a degree 1 polynomial. In our denominator, we have a 3x squared, which is a degree 2 polynomial. Since the denominator has a higher degree than the numerator, we know that we have a horizontal asymptote, and specifically, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So we've now found all of the asymptotes for our function h of x. So in this video, we went over how to find the different asymptotes of a rational function, and we got some practice finding them in our examples.